welcome to the Mad Trio podcast. This week, we the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man Stevens, and Rob, the old guy. You're listening to the Rob Charney Show. Yeah, it's me. I'm here for another episode of the Mad Trio. I think we oh. should have chosen different music for that opening after that. <laughs> so we're going to start off as we traditionally do is bring out the dead, mourn and celebrate the loss of some of our favorite people. Dancing with a star judge, Lena Len Goodman passed away at 78 years old. Barry Humphreys, otherwise known as comedian Dane Edma, passes away at 89, <laughs> uh, 89 years old, which is a hell of an age. That's a really that's a good run. Wow. And let's see. Uh, my list. Uh, I, why don't the lists I find online have a lot of footballers? Uh, April 19th was Elmer Bud Schulster, American politician, passed away. Uh, Mike Coleman, English Elmer rugby. Fudd? <laughs> That's what I thought reading it. Mike Coleman, ah, English oh, rugby union player, passed away. And, and so... Get the, the news that surprised me. This is for Ryan, even though he's not on. Alec Baldwin's manslaughter charge to be dropped in Rust shooting. Yes, yes I did hear about that. Uh, the armor for the the set is still up for prosecution, though. Hmm. Because if, if I understand the way they do it and how many times we talked about this, it all ends and begins with them, right? So if any mishaps happen, it's because yeah. the chain of custody wasn't done the proper way. Yeah. Well, it's going to depend on what prosecution <laughs> asserts that wasn't proper. Maybe it was proper. I mean, you know, again, you're going to have to get experts. So to this really talk yeah. about it. This article's from yeah. this article's from Variety. Prosecutors are expecting to drop manslaughter charges against Alec Baldwin and the depth and the death of Rust cinematographer. Helena Hutchins, sources confirmed on Thursday. In a statement Thursday evening, the special prosecutors in the case said the new facts had come to light and make it impossible to proceed against Alec Baldwin at the time allotted. That's kind of an odd way of putting it. So, what? They needed more time? Yeah, that's kind mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm. How many years well, is don't... it? Two? Yeah, yeah don't about forget, that. We have a prosecutor that's, that's decided to leave the office that she was working at in the middle of this. So there, there's a few things that took place. Yeah. See, Baldwin's, um, lawyers, Baldwin's lawyers recently presented evidence to the prosecutors that influenced the decision to drop the charges, according to his sources familiar with the process. The evidence in, in di indicated that the Colt 45 had been modified prior to shooting, making it more difficult for the DA to prove that Baldwin actually pulled the trigger. What? I'm. So I can take a wild stab at what they mean by that. It, it may have had a lightened trigger, oh. which ah. means that it, it could have gone off easily. So yeah. this is just over a year, year and a half. Hmm. But. Interesting. Yeah. Why would they lighten a the trigger on a prop gun? Well, you got to remember this. I don't think it was initially just a, a prop gun. I think this is a regular gun that's being used on a set. So, so I, I think this is a single action army that was used on the set. I think. They said I Colt, didn't hear. Is, is all they said was they is said Colt forty five in the article. Well, it could mean the cartridge. It could mean the gun. You know yeah. what is it? Is it a you know a, another manufacturers a lot of italian manufacturers of those, those style guns so who knows i'm just surprised that like if it like they would even light the trigger like there's no reason to do it it, it shouldn't be mm, not for a movie uh, well but again remember <clears throat> this gun wasn't i don't think this gun was ever initially designed to be just in a movie or as a prop gun i think this was a regular single action of some type that they bought and brought in to be used on this particular set. So this is an actual firearm, John. Well, no, I get that. But it's like, so my thought, the way I'm looking at it, that if it had been modified before they purchased it, then that was negligence on their part, not realizing the trigger had been modified. And, or if it had been done, whether it was their custody, it was their fault for lighting the trigger and not informing somebody that the trigger pound, poundage had been reduced. 
Uh, I don't know. I agree with that. But, you know, that's that's the whole reason we let a prosecutor decide if something like this should be. Uh, oh, I mean, my thought is the armor should. But... I mean, my thought is the armorer should tell the star, hey, just to let you know, this triggers a little sensitive. You know, I, I'm assuming that would be part <sighs> of the safety talk. But you don't know that it wasn't. I mean, the, we don't have all the information yet. No, true. That's why she's probably still being prosecuted and will probably be charged by the by the sound of it. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. So something sad is happening, and it uh, I'm kind of heartbroken in this. Netflix is officially shutting down its DVD business. Yes, I did see that. <clears throat> and on top of that, they are going to be rolling out the password sharing cost now. So so they're going to come out with a different, a, a separate tier of cost if you share your passwords? Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, the, Canada has it already implemented. Mm. And it's like an extra six dollars or something like that. And is that for people outside of your house? Like if you have a son yeah. in Timbuk? Okay. But see, that's to me that's bullshit. So, um, like, my son should not have to. I should not have to pay for my son to use my Netflix. So we'll see. We'll see what they actually implement and how it works, but. I know. I know uh, there I were, there... and I know that they were initially going to do like if you have like a, a vacation home or something like that that you go out right to that there's some verification that they'll give you like up to two weeks without charging you or some crap like that. I'm like, it just sounds all really complicated hmm. and like a pain in the ass. So I don't know. So are they, how are they telling? So my question is on the technical side, IP address. How, do, how can they tell if IP addresses? The, the last oh, time okay, I, see. the last time I read it was tied your IP address. Now the question oh. real, it's probably IP address and metadata, because if you turn it off mm -hmm. on and off your router, that generally cycles to the next IP address. Cause most people well, don't have static. Don't, don't forget VPNs hide your IP addresses and, and yeah. changes it. So all of those, all of us should be using a VPN. And so are we all of a sudden saying, hey, Netflix is saying you can't use a VPN because yeah, it's probably, we have to tell? Well, well yeah. don't don't forget, they That's also told you if you used a VPN specifically for another country to watch their content, they would permanently ban your account by, you know, so because the way it works, because I've played around with it, you log in and then you change the country of origin on your VPN, and that allows you to see wherever. Because um, they've been wanting to ban it forever because they've gotten in trouble for it. I don't know. I see lots of problems coming up. Well, a lot of people this. were a lot of people were pissed about it because they're like, "Hey, I share this with my college daughter who you know is in Timbuktu somewhere. Why should right. I just like James?" But six so bucks. Are, are our Netflix memberships considered family? memberships as far as my understanding no it's per account so it would be your membership and you decide to so i'm assuming this would be a family package then then that that's the type of thing they'll have to come out with yeah yeah i mean that's what i you know i have the top of the line one for internet only and so that one's supposed to be me and a few and up to like four or five devices. And to me, that's saying I'm sharing my password with these devices. Right. So that shouldn't charge me. Right. Right. Wouldn't think so. I, but you know, now I, Netflix coming along and saying, no, we are <laughs> going to charge. You. So that's where I'm like, this is bullshit to me. Yeah. So here is devices should be able to be anywhere they are. So here is the Netflix plan, and I haven't read this in a long time. They have the standard plan with ads, the basic, the standard, and then the premium. And the premium is unlimited ad-free movies, TV shows, and mobile games, four, four devices at a time, watch Ultra HD, and download uh, on six supported devices at one time. See? And, it, and it's so from... To me, 
and it's from six to twenty dollars a month. That right oh. there says that I have six people that can download and four people that can watch all at the same time. Right. Now it shouldn't matter where the hell they're located at that moment in time. See, that's that's not how I actually read it, to be honest. That's four How do you read it? So it's it's four supported devices, mean it's four devices, not four people. So it could be four devices within your house. Four devices. Right. He said that. He said four devices. But that's not people. That device could be across the freaking county. Oh no, I I completely I completely agree with you, but the way it's the the way it's worded here to me, I know what they meant. They meant four devices mm-hmm. in your domicile, not four devices. You know, that's the no, way I'm reading. Well, they're they're going to have to no. be specific about it, and maybe maybe the the agreement that they're coming out or, or the new agreement they're going going to be coming out with isn't actually hasn't hit the <clears> website <throat> yet with with this new tier plan or whatever the heck they're going to come out with. So maybe you're reading the existing one, Jonathan. So here's, there's a thing called sharing. You click on that. It says a Netflix account is meant to be shared in one air quotes household. People who live in the same location with the account owner, people who are not in your household will need to sign up for their own account to watch Netflix. So now they're not going by family. They're going by household. Yeah. But no, see, the only issue with that is they, they said same location because same household would be if if you're if you're a divorcee and you share custody with your child, that household, it's that kid is still part of your household. Yeah. Until so, until they say the same location. I'm, I'm being pedantic. Yeah. Well, well you have to be being pedantic. Bitches, yeah. So why not? Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You have to be. We, we're going to have to find out the, the, the exact yeah. details of what this means. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. By the way, ad supported ad supported Netflix sounds awful. It's bad enough on Hulu. Oh, I I I think I did ad supported Hulu for a short time, and then I just said fuck that. And I, I, and I, I, I can't. I, 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 no no offense. That... I can't stand any ads. That's why I DVR anything that's on regular network stuff, and I stream everything else because I'm too old. To waste my time. I, I I have Hulu and ESPN and all that just because of um uh I'm a proud member of Verizon. By the way, Verizon, I'll say that forever if you want to sponsor us, but I get it through my Verizon plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> the day. <laughs> that I, I have die. one that I that I watch some ads on every so often because they have some movies that you can't find on the other uh, sites. And yeah. but, the only know. time that that hits me every once in a while is that if I don't log into YouTube. And I'll watch a YouTube, but all of a sudden there's a freaking ad. And I went, dang, I didn't log in before I watched this, and I hate it. <laughs> so, so you guys ready for uh, Guess That State? Guess That State. Uh, sure, go. Bridget Watkins, 43, who allegedly took fawns into her home and raised the deer with the intentions of training them to attack hunters, was taken into custody last Friday. At the time of the arrest, Watkins was in possession of several grams of meth, four (laughs) beer, and many stolen broken electronics. (laughs) Attention was drawn to Watkins when she began giving meth to the young deer, and they were caught rummaging through people's garages and back porches. A homeowner followed one of the deer back to Watkins' residence in an attempt to recover his property, he found himself face to face with Watkins wearing only a duct tape bikini and disassembling his clock radio. <laughs> but by the way, duct tape bikini sounds like one of those nineties indie bands also sounds very <laughs> painful. Oh, you, you, this lady is, is very, oh. you don't want to see her in her duct tape bikini. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want to see it. I so can't what even imagine. Do you guys think well, you know, initially I was thinking maybe it'd be a white tail steak. I mean, <laughs> going, hmm, I don't know, let's say uh, Ohio. No, uh, not too far. Okay. Not Michigan. too far. Kentucky. Arkansas. Arkansas. Oh. Arkansas. Not too I was far. closer. Far enough. <laughs> Far enough, but you know it's the in south the... somewhere. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, a duct tape bikini. That that I. Only like three or four states away, Rob. Yeah, you know. 
I, I do have a question. Spit and what, it, man. What, Spit it. I, I, I want to know what went through somebody's mind. They're thinking, I have no clothes. I'm just going to use something called duct tape. I'm just, she should have used Gorilla Glue or glue, a Gorilla <laughs> Tape. Would have ripped her nipples off. <laughs> Considering yeah. I've seen that stuff rip off concrete. Uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, I, can't, I found that little little gem <laughs> as I was scrolling through. <laughs> By your description, so it doesn't sound like. Did you see the uh, launch of uh, SpaceX's? Um... Yeah, yeah. You did. So, uh, so uh, hold on, hold on. But yeah. before you get into, it, I gotta say, a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of an Elon Musk fanboy, but I love SpaceX. No matter what happened, that was one of the coolest things I've seen in my lifetime. <laughs> because it was, it was, it was the world's Look. most powerful rocket launching, and it like, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, it's it's well, look, so Elon comes out and says, mm, yeah, OK, we might have miscalculated on the launch pad. Well, he he said that it was a 50 yeah. 50 chance it wasn't going to turn into a giant Roman candle. So as soon as well, he said that, I'm like, I'm fucking watching. He, he, as soon as he said that, dude's like, I'm watching that. <laughs> well, the, the thing about it was, is that um, it successfully launched. It didn't yeah. blow up. It didn't blow up. It didn't blow up on the ground. And it actually made it a good, good distance out there before it did finally go. It went into so, orbit, I thought. Like or he like near said it. on his Twitter, learned a lot for next test launch in a few months. So I, I got to give him credit on that. He looks at it as a full on <laughs> learning experience. They did things right. Obviously, it got off the ground. It didn't blow up on the ground it, it's actually amazing that it didn't considering all the damage that was done to it as it was <laughs> yeah. lifting off you know and it, so if you think about it that says a lot for the design really I and mean, that's you, that's my favorite by the way my favorite thing is spacex if anybody's not following it it's true old school rocket scientists they blow shit up and figure out why it went wrong and this one <laughs> the launch pad they uh they officially made themselves a little pool for water. <laughs> that thing is just did you, destroyed. Did you see it? I, I saw yeah, it I today. Was, yeah, I was looking at pictures of it, and it's like, mm, okay, well, maybe it didn't completely blow up, blow up, but it sure did some damage. If, for, for for those golfers, that's a divot you can't replace. <laughs> yeah. At a big hole. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it did good. I, it did good. Talk about a big hole. Guess what uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did? He, this is a U.S. Today article, and, and no, it doesn't involve a maid, but Arnold Schwarzenegger fills giant pothole in his neighborhood after wanting, waiting for weeks for a fix. So there's a picture of him with a giant sack and shaking it out, then throwing dirt on it and fixing a pothole. Yeah, it was a big sack of black top that he was pouring on it. Did you hear what the city came out and said? Probably they got to fix it. No, it was a gutter. Oh. <laughs> Wait, if it was a gutter... I, mean, I swear to God, that's what they came out and said. Arnold fixed the gutter. <laughs> well, in Los Angeles, I'm surprised there wasn't a family of six living there. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of like baffled. Like, So he went out and just found this hole and threw some oh, stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. Knowing Arnold, it was somewhere near his house or his driveway or something, and he didn't want to get his Hummer's tires nicked or who knows. The pothole was terminated. So, John, I, I know that you like to get the physical copies of games and DVDs and things like that. I'm 50-50 now, but yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you're a little bit less on having the physical copy of, of each one. So um, did you hear about the physical copies of Star Wars Jedi Survivor? No, I have I haven't. I have the first game, but I haven't even heard anything about the new one. Okay. So the second one is being released and the box, the physical copy of the box says that a download is required. <laughs> the game is over 140 gigabytes to download digitally. <sighs> and so they're just saying that a Blu-ray disc isn't enough to do it. So they're not only selling the disc, but they're selling an incomplete disc. 
<laughs> or guess you know I'm, I'm i'm assuming it's going to be like the 90 dollars standard so i'm just wondering like why so you're only getting half a game i'm i'm wondering what features like can you play the basic game when there's not like any additional items because if you can't even play the first I, I, a i don't think there's multiplayer but if you can't play the whole game, then what's yeah? I'm I'm kind of confused at the point because there's still some people who do not have Wi-Fi or internet that actually play the Xbox. That's well, I'm thinking odd. like, um, I'm just thinking like, why would you release that? I mean, you could do like two disc. Um, yeah, the last Red yeah, for Dead was two like, discs. Yeah, so I I don't know. I, uh, and I'm just like, you can't, I'm thinking like, it's going to be one of those where it's like, you know, like how you can start playing the game as it's downloading on the, onto the hard drive mm -hmm. after a certain point. I'm like, can you even play like part of the game without doing the full on download? I just, don't. yeah. And some people can't, don't have, I mean, I'm sure there's data caps. Can you imagine the data caps <laughs> when that game gets released? Well, Comcast. Well, think of all the people, all the people that still have dial-up. Well, yeah. well, well, Comcast, for example, if you have their basic plan without their unlimited, and I don't remember what that's called, it's a terabyte data cap. So, yeah. but after a terabyte, it's like x so much money per additional hundred gigabytes or something, if I remember correctly, because I went over the cap a couple of times during holiday seasons. Um, oh well. That's crazy. Oh, big. Yeah, crazy. So I've got a listicle. Melanie? You guys ready for this? This is for you. This is for Melanie. Even though Melanie doesn't seem to be able to join us lately. Well, her, her life is busy. I can. Oh, yeah, yeah. New mom. So we'll forgive her. Wait, so this wait. Is... Wait, hold on. Hold on. Before hold we on. get there. Uh, uh oh. Listen to this. Today's show is brought to you by Audacity, the unforgettable party game for mischievous people. The game where dignity is overrated. Make sure you go to O-D-D-A-S-S-I-T-Y.com or selected stores. Make sure you use Mad Trio, all caps, all one word for 10% off your final order. Make sure you tell Miss Audacity herself that the Mad Trio sent you. Do you want to keep up to date with the maddest of the mad at the Mad Trio podcast? Make sure you go to themadtrio.com or check out our social media feeds on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hey! Another plug in the can, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Myths. It's more than one, John. You thought were true, but science says you're an idiot. <laughs> all right all right don't get so excited yay <clears throat> hmm. all right this is this is the one that you always like john duck and cover <laughs> all right but this one is Time more than cover, what we're the bombs coming down. this one is hiding under a highway overpass under a highway uh, overpass is not a good way to survive a tornado. It's been proven that winds get concentrated and the speeds increase underneath the overpass. Yeah, I, I would have said that was a stupid place to <laughs> die. Yeah, I mean, to get out of the rain, I can see. But now I hide from a tornado, probably not a good idea. Memory of a goldfish. Goldfish have a three-second memory. Turns out that's not true. You can actually teach a goldfish to even do tricks, and it'll remember it. So, you know, a little bit better. Cracking knuckles equals arthritis later in life. No. No, it turns out that that's not true either. So you're an idiot if you believe that one. That's an old wives' tale. That's an old wives' tale. Okay. Uh, old school dietary advice. Most dietary information is widely accepted by the public. but from studies that have been proven wrong since the 1970s. Well, I can believe that. Although, wait a minute. Okay, see, here's what's wrong with it. Goes off to say right off the bat, I just I'm gonna call BS on this one, because it says that nobody is bothered by MSG. I can tell you for a fact, I'm one who is definitely bothered by MSG. So I don't like that story. 
<laughs> rice is bad for birds. The rice will make birds who eat it explode. <laughs> I've heard they don't explode, but it does do some stuff to their insides. Reminds me of the Jeff uh, Foxworthy joke. I paid five the, bucks to see that once. Harming the birds wasn't an actual risk. It was getting rice grain stuck in an ear. That is the problem. In a bird's ear? No, I didn't say whose ear. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is probably your ear could be a problem. I uh shaving makes hair grow back thicker that's false well, that's a wife's tale. that was the case i i i have even thicker beard than i already have and i don't want that so that's not true uh our blood is not blue my grandpa when i was very little used to tell me that i was that i was royalty because my blood veins were blue and only royalty had blue blood Oh, boy. <laughs> Most things that uh, tout detoxifying properties. Body naturally detoxifies detoxifies the blood. What's the big deal about this one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, see, I told you, I warned you guys. I'm reading this on the fly. Yeah, yeah I figured you were. You can't, you can't, you can't clean shave your way to a beard. So I guess they're saying for all those women out there shaving, they're not going to get beards. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not do touching. They shave that. their faces? Oh, well, some women do. I'm not well, touching I mean, that one. That, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there is an alpha wolf in a pack, like the person that made the first claim to punk his own claim, debunked, debunked. They so they misspelled their own word here. But nobody cared. I, I kind of like to punk. I do too. It's actually better. I don't think that's what they meant though. Because I can tell right off reading this that these people aren't the brightest bulbs. Uh, <laughs> Quick, somebody Exercise plans. shifts weight in certain areas. So. Wait, what? Yeah. So doing ab exercises or anything region specific will burn fat and tighten skin. Primarily around the specific area. Uh, hmm. No. No, apparently not. <laughs> I don't know. If you look at Kim Kardashian, that seems to be true. Well, that's all plastic surgery. That's, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Milk is good for cats. As no. a cat lover, I've always yeah. drives me insane that so many people will automatically give a stray they found milk. Most cats are lactose intolerant. <laughs> I believe that. I, I wondered that same thing myself, too. Uh, the belief that, here we go, Jonathan, the belief that sugar causes hyperactivity in children. Hmm. The belief has been around for decades, but numerous scientific studies have shown that there is no evidence to support it. Whatever you want. What? No, <laughs> no I. It wasn't me either. I cry bullshit on that, but there's other things that give kids, uh, that, that make kids hyper, but sugar is definitely one of them. Well, you know, uh, dyes no actually said, in it. Dye, yeah, dye dyes is do. probably more likely to, to do it than the sugar. I mean, I'm sure they don't go to sleep right away after eating a bowl of sugar, but. I, well, I, I mean, sugar, they've cut out sugar a lot in their cat. And they, um, they're cat food. high caffeine drinks recently. I've noticed that. So, yeah. Yeah. well, I mean, you know, the whole idea is for us to slow down on sugar anyway, and it's probably not a bad idea, especially so so many of us are pre diabetic or diabetic and, and, already. And don't forget, most of American foods for some reason have a hell of a lot of an additional sugar that doesn't need it. It's because we got this unnatural craving for sweet stuff. It's like all the sugar they put in uh, tomato sauce. There's an Italian. There's Ital a ton of sugar in tomato sauce. There, there's an Italian See, somewhere just, who's really pissed off. Just, no, you know, I've watched actual real Italian people, and some of them still put sugar in their pasta, in their red sauces. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. Yeah. Tomatoes are sweet you enough. You only have to cook it for about 40 minutes, 
and the acidity drops. That's why they put sugar in it is to balance out the acidity that's naturally yeah. in tomatoes. Why don't they put you a carrot in there? You can that out. Yeah. If you put a carrot um, in there. You it, don't it... have to add you know, sugar to it. And on top of that, you're only masking the stupid acidity. You're not getting rid of the acidity. See, I've always right. heard. Yeah. I've always heard if you drop a carrot in there, like a peeled carrot, it helps to remove the acidity. Why you? I've 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 seen that. I've, I've seen Italians that's... talk about it. <laughs> that's James Bellywick, not mine. Uh, keep going. Vax vaccines cause autism. There's no proof of that one. Well, the only reason I heard about that one, because they said some of the vaccines have heavy metal, but I, like some of my guests contain mercury. Mercury, mercury mm -hmm. was, it was in a lot of vaccines at one time. And I'm, I know that they're, you know what it's for? It's for, to preserve it. That's all it's there for. But I guess the question is how much, vaccine. how much of that heavy metal was in that, was in that shot? Well, I mean, I assume if you take a couple hundred doses of vaccines, <laughs> it may not be good for you. Well, yeah, you got to snort it. Considering how many vaccines I give children now, oof. And ah, jeez, I know who you sound like. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm playing the devil's advocate, which, by the way, I mean, uh -huh. used to be sitting, a real a real position. And the sitting too scene. close to the TV makes you go blind. No, nope. uh, it, it, old it, ones <laughs> that emitted probably radiation. Maybe the great big old cathode ray tubes when, like, when I was a kid. It will make yeah, you... the ones that are made out of primarily asbestos, lead, and radiation. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it, it will. I don't think it was the lead or asbestos that's the problem. The radiation, <laughs> on the other hand, <laughs> it, it, it will make you nearsighted. If you stare at screens too long. Mm -hmm. I it, don't know. It, I'm surprised they didn't say something else would make you go blind here, but. Give you furry palms. Uh, <laughs> that makes you, you play fat. With it too much, you'll shoot your eye out. Yeah, that's right. Wait, that did makes... I that right? I'm sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you fat. Um, okay, so what? if you eat a lot of fat, it makes you fat. You know, I suppose if you eat a what lot type of fat. Of, what, like, what type of fat, though? There's okay. good fats and Are bad fats. Cutting the fat off a of steak and eating it? Are we just eating butter? I... Are we eating butter on toast? What kind of fat? I mean, if you hey, let's face it, butter fat is fat. Yeah, well, yeah, it's gonna make you fat. <laughs> I don't know. To me, fat is flavor, so I kind of like the fat on the steak. It gives a lot of flavor. To but, but as as somebody whose doctor has told him once, you need good fats, and this mm -hmm. was recently. So I think it depends. No, mm. all right. So we've we've heard the old uh, eggs are good and bad for you. Right, I, I know. Right now, they say they're good for you, so they, they've come full circle. That that's hilarious. Times, every, right? every ten years, I in, in my lifetime, I say I hear, "Do you eat eggs for breakfast? You're gonna die." Ten years later, yeah, you're gonna live longer by eating eggs. It's happened every ten, then five to like, ten years. Eat only white, only the whites. <clears throat> eat only the yolks. It's like, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, cats don't bond with their owners. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, cats. Yeah, I can't. I'll call. Yeah, I don't agree with that one. I, I, I will say that cats are, most cats are more independent, unlike dogs. Oh, well, yeah, they're a little more aloof. You know, they've got morals to stand up. Not all <laughs> cats. I, I've, I've known a few people who describe their cat as excessively needy. But uh, the man. question is, uh, is, is that as needy as my, my dog right now, who's harassing me to get outside? So the, the, uh, that's your only right or left brained. That's bullshit. Mm, nah, because you use both sides of your brains. They used Not to say only that. that, but uh, scientists who have studied the brain find out that most people actually, you know how they say that you don't use all of your brain? Yeah, you do. It used to be the 10%, right? You're only using 10% of your brain. Well, that's because you wanted to get out of homework that day. Well, you only, you only use a specific part for a different task. So they find out that as you go through life, and you're doing different things, you use different parts of your brain to interact with different situations and everything. Right. So it's, well, at the, at this stage, the yeah, at this stage for me, I can't afford to lose any or not use all of it. Let's just put it that way. I need to use all of it all the time. Yeah. So. There yeah, are times so I'm thinking I'm losing it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another one. Lie detectors are accurate. No. no, they definitely are not 100%. The, that's for sure. They're more accurate than they used to be. 
Yeah, I suppose. There's, there's still I mean, not probably a, only fifty percent. They're still not Back admissible in the at court. Spanish Inquisition, they were very inaccurate. <laughs> well, you know, then they would poke an eye out and say, "Hey, are you telling the truth or a lie?" <laughs> it's like my my so, favorite yeah. one. If you if I tie you to this rock and you drown, you're innocent. Like, yeah, well, that was the old, like the old witches, right? They they tie them onto this thing that's almost like a teeter totter totter that was. They put them over a river and they dunk them down in the river. And then they keep them there until they drown. And that what? That means you're a witch. <laughs> See? Well, no, no. If you don't drown, you're you're you're, you're innocent. <laughs> you're, you're oh, survive. there you go. And on if the you other survive, side, you're a witch. I made a if mistake. You die, you're not. <laughs> we killed an innocent person. <laughs> no, they they, 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 were, they were a okay. witch. <laughs> they they went to go be with their god. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Well, that's the end of my listicle. That was enough. Well, I've, I've got some shakeouts, <laughs> some some things. If you're a fan of those uh, 24-hour talking head news channels, um, Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon were both fired yeah. by their respective agencies. and uh, They're gone. I honestly don't know any of them are, but they're apparently they were pretty big in their, per, in their perspective channels. CNN. You don't know who Tucker Carlson is? I, vaguely. I have I purposely avoid news at this point in time because <laughs> it's so much. There's so much bullshit on, on the way they they. We we live in the yeah. the the age of hyperbole and it's kind of annoying. So, I haven't watched news other than in passing by a TV that has it on. In probably twenty something years, John. And I know who Tucker, Tucker Carlson is. Well, I only had streaming. I've I've only really had streaming TV, honestly, for the last five to ten years. And the only reason I actually do know of him is a number of years ago he did a, a couple of specials regarding San Francisco's uh, homeless crisis, and uh, that's the only reason I know of him. Otherwise, I've I've never actually watched anything he did. Oh, talk about San Francisco. Uh, was it? F- Home goods, full goods, whatever that that grocery store Amazon owns, they're shutting down their their Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Whole they're foods. shutting down their flagship Whole store in San Francisco. Foods? Yeah, but it's because the, they're worried about the safety of their employees. So it's typical San Francisco again. They can't, you know, keep the crime away from the businesses and the stores in certain areas of San Francisco. And so, you know, Whole Foods came out and said, look, we're worried about our employees. You know, there's been attacks and other things going down, and it's just not worth it until the crime gets cleaned up. So they're closing down that one particular store. But the other thing is there's six other stores in San Francisco City proper. And was it <laughs> Walmart shutting like half the store down, half their stores down in Chicago, and they said they've never made a dime in Chicago? That doesn't surprise me. That's because they don't have somebody there to shoot or tase people running out with TVs. <laughs> I think, what was that old comedian that says, I just need to carry around the flexible end and a fishing pole? You know, you catch somebody do it, just go, whack, what are you doing? You know, like, or or my favorite one, just... Chicago, you're going to get shot for that. What what they need to do, or, fi- or find one of those really old, sour nuns that just love, you know, that love hitting people, and just get those. Or an old Jewish lady. You're talking about Chicago here, John. Yeah, so, you know, nobody's going to shoot a nun. You got to have, like, the, the National Guard protecting the Walmarts in Chicago. You, you know, it's a bad habit to shoot a nun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it sure could be, John. Uh, I'm <laughs> ignoring your joke. I'm, jo- I'm ignoring your joke pun that was terribly formulated um yeah. so did you guys hear that um nevada and california are gonna get their first bullet train hmm. well california's had a, a in theory have had a bullet train and in, in, in being built for the last 25 years yeah and we're gonna get a big freeway all the way up to tahoe too i've heard mm. many lies This one actually might happen because it's going to be backed by Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So they're going to be building a bullet train from Las Vegas to Los Angeles and back. So You know, that's probably... I see that actually happening. You you know why? Because they want to watch Raiders games. (laughs) Well, don't forget they're going to want to watch A games now, too. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, the the Nevada and California put in to the Biden administration to fast track the federal funds to get it there and get it done. And it's going to be costing about more than $10 billion to get it done. Oh. Oh. Which, that's what bugs me about federal government. You know, we're we're so in debt, but they throw around $10 billion, $10 trillion. Like it's nothing. It just bothers me. So, like, so they, they, they know that this just screws our country. Somebody but, yeah. look up. Somebody look up how much the California bullet train is costing because it's it's an order of magnitude greater <laughs> than what it was promised. I guarantee it. They say it's going to cost you ten billion. It's going to be fifty billion by the time it's done. I I want to get out a rant about government spending because it's just uh, it's so ridiculous. Like how much they they they. If I threw around that many zeros, <laughs> I would be in prison. Because my bank account does not possess that many zeros. Mm. Oh, see, this one. Uh, San Francisco to San Jose segment of the bullet train. 5.3 billion. <sighs> so that's just that section. That's not even the full thing. There we go. Uh, the original estimate was 33 billion. I'm trying to find out where it's at now. They don't. Even, they can't even. They can't even say what it's going to be now. That's where it's at, John. Hmm. I do <laughs> believe it. Didn't they finally put a stop to it? Uh, they decided that they were not going to go ahead with. I am trying to all. find out. So this is from June of 2022. Yeah, so the reason I say that is because I think the Fed, the Feds, kind of went mm, maybe not a good idea, guys. Because it because was turning it was into the slowest. In- it was turning into the slowest bullet train in history. Well, by the yeah. time it would have been built, uh, <laughs> there'd be flying cars. Kids. Yeah, just I'd finally, out. you'd finally have those robot butlers they promised you. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I I just think it's hilarious that you know the the project that we had up here uh, uh, expanding the the multi lane freeway from sacramento all the way up to tahoe you know you watch the the estimates of the years that it was going to be finished jumping by like five year intervals and then they completely just took down the signs (laughs) and um, you don't even see them even attempting it anymore and they didn't even make it uh, you know they they barely even made it (laughs) you know into the county no right no yeah it's well, you know, it sounds like it's a good idea on paper. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea on paper until they find out how many boulders are actually in underneath the ground. <laughs> well, you know, it's the same idea of a bullet train from San Francisco, yeah. Francisco to L.A. Nobody talks about the fact that there are mountains between here and there. Well, I think yeah. one of the, the other biggest factors that kept adding stops, which was a bullet train only is a bullet train if you if you have as few stops as possible. And they said, well, we're going to go here and we're going to go here. And well, one... you know, that's the typical pork barrel situation where every politician in every county you know, wants to say, hey, we have a stop in whatever county. And so the only way they were going to vote for the the program was to say, OK, you get a stop. Well, that's you know, exactly what happened. As, as much yeah. pork as there is in government, you think people would be having part attacks more. That's a health well, joke. Least politicians would have. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I'm uh, for for those people who are, are really into vinyl. I don't know how many of you are there. Apparently, Record Store Day was the other day, and it was a massive hit. Record uh, vinyl and record stores are <laughs> going through the roof. And I signed okay, up for I, I. What what is Excuse Record me. Store Day? I mean, <laughs> are store they day. giving you to? Or are they it's, giving you records for like ten cents? So uh, according to yeah, what I saw, basically it was like record store day where you go get buy your records and people, they some places would give you deals. There were, I saw a bunch of pictures and there were people lined out for hours trying to get good deals. It looked like Black Friday from like were these people. Were they lined out or lined up? Lined up. So they're lined out. Like this mental, mental vision, everybody laying on the sidewalk and people putting a chalk line around <laughs> Did they look them. like you or were they all standing there with past blue ribbon like the hipsters they are? I, they, they, <laughs> they looked like civilians. 
just normal <laughs> everyday people. Um, uh huh. Yes, John. I'm sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you mean they look like trendy wannabes who actually don't know what records really are? Honestly, from the people I to the people I saw on the Facebook groups I'm a part of, um, some people got some amazing deals on some fairly rare albums. So I'm assuming it was one of these things that they lined up. It was a hit or miss, but vinyl is definitely making a comeback. And I found a service called Vinyl V N Y L, where you pay for you tell them like all the bands and music you're a fan of, and they send you a curated little box full of a couple of records. And or I'll be. Like- probably 80 times the cost of actually the records a brand new if they're brand new records no because brand new records are anywhere right now between 15 and 40 dollars depending on what you're getting in the band um if it's an old record if you're right. talking about like a fairly average like a harry mansion or mention or whatever you like if it's an advert if it's a record that was mass produced back in the 60s usually it's anywhere between like one and five bucks it just depends um, if it's a, like a Beatles record, for example, some of those can go from like twenty to three hundred dollars or higher, depending. Actually, I'm curious. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know. I think it's cool the records are coming back, but I think the logistics of everyone doing this is just kind of like. Eh. <laughs> Um, I think like, cause the, uh, one of the articles I read today talked about how tapes and CDs and, and, and even possibly eight tracks are on the comeback. Cause I think people are realizing the negative side of streaming because eight shit. tracks will never make a comeback. I hope not. Nobody wants to hear the no. mid- Nobody wants no. to hear a crunch in the middle of their song. Mm. On the other hand, there are Trust still me, bands. They ate more tapes than they ever played. Uh, on the other, there are still bands that release on eight track. Why? I couldn't tell you, but there are. <laughs> there was a on one of my favorite YouTubers reviewed a, a an ancient, um, at least ancient for me, not ancient for the old guy, technology for cassette, and it was supposed to be better than the the, the cassette that made it, and actually released it on this format that nobody's ever heard of, and only a handful of players exist. Um, so, John, this one, this is a list for you. It's all I'm only doing three of them. <laughs> But the most expensive vinyl records. What okay. do you think number one is? Probably a Beatles album would be my guess. No, it's Choose Your Weapon by Scaramanga Silk. I've never even heard of these people, but it's an electronic album. What year? And I'm sure that's because, you know, it's people that are out there for, you know, disc jockeys. One copy, only 20 copies exist, and one of the copies sold for $27,500. What year okay. was it What year was it made? Again, people have too much money than brains. Wow. Guess what number two is? I can't after that. All right, you ready? Yeah. So this one was the 1987 release. Of Prince's The Black Album. Hmm. And this one went for $25,000. And it was an uncirculated sealed LP from the otherwise destroyed Canadian production (laughs) run. Wow. Yeah. So this was saved by an employee at the last minute. And it sold for $25,000. So I can... I'm, to be honest, I don't know Prince all that well. I can see that. I, I'm kind of shocked at Prince, but on the other hand, I don't. I'm not a giant fan of his. But unopened uh, copies okay. from certain production runs can definitely go for a lot. Then of money. you'll be really shocked at number three's most expensive album ever sold. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. The 1987, the Black Album by Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. But this one was for wow. a different one. So both of the top two most expensive ones were both by Prince. Wow. Top two or three. For, this one sold for $20,000. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't, have, yeah. I couldn't have picked that out of a lineup if it hit me Number over the head. Number four is The Beatles, by the way. Which just, album? Just so you feel better. 
the the Love Me Do album. Uh, this one sold for fifteen thousand. Hmm. Are there and any more on that? I know it's also your favorite one, number five, Pink Floyd, Uma Guma. <laughs> I I only like Uma Guma because it's it's like one of my favorite thing about sixties music is they're a lot more experimental than they are today, and that entire album is just fucking weird. Um, if you guys I don't, don't disagree know it. With that. It has it has Sid Barrett, the original singer who who legitimately went crazy. If you've never heard it, it's worth a listen once. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all right. I mean, you know, it was one of those albums that was back in the time that was designed to be listened with headphones while you're stoned out of your mind. And that yeah, that's the whole reason it was made. Let's be honest you you, you were like hearing you were you were yes. hearing colors and seeing words. Let's be honest. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and it's just weird that number two and number three are both the same album by Prince, but it seems like this was like the, like that that LP was really rare and uncirculated. So I guess getting that vinyl copy of that album was really important. Wow. I, I mean... Over like twenty five thousand and dollars important. I'm not sure, but okay. I, 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 I when you got money to burn. But my question is yeah, a couple of things. I is guess how I many on something, right? Well, my question yeah. is how many survive? Uh, like how many actual copies were reproduced of that album? And I guess since you said it was a Canadian pressing, uh, uh, the Canadian press one uh, is supposedly was uh, all of them were destroyed. They were supposed to be destroyed, but a pressing plant employee snuck one out. That's why that one went for $25,000. The other one um, what, uh, was uh, so apparently sold on Discogs, but it, was, it wasn't it was the Canadian release, which was destroyed. But these were also uh, supposed to be uh, uncirculated. Now, so. since Records was in the heyday of the old guy... Do you ever remember looking for a certain pressing, like this pressing versus that pressing on an album? Mm, so my time mostly was looking for if it's an English, you know, <laughs> uh, pressing from UK. Uh, I right? gotcha. From, you know, from the UK versus United States pressings a lot of the times. So things like, like that for like, a prime example would have been a Beatles album. Maybe something that was actually on the uh, Apple label. So yeah. yeah, you look for certain labels, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, huh, huh, huh. yeah. I mean, I listened to quite a few records when I was a kid. I mean, I think every parent at the in the eighties had that one that was the the eight track player, the record player, and the tape player all in one unit. I, I can tell yeah. you who didn't. You. The old guy never had anything like that. You didn't yeah. have one of those, Rob? Mm-mm. So, well, my, my parents had like a cabinet thing. And this so, thing, and, so, and so for this tall cabinet, and it had a, a record player on one on one tier of it, an mm-hmm. eight track on another tier, and then there was the a double tape player on one section, and then there was like space to store everything. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Well, so the, the cabinets that were when I was growing up as a kid growing up, they were just record players and basically a big couple of sets of speakers and record player in the middle. We didn't have any combo things, especially no eight tracks. Um, my parents aren't into that at all. And, wow. uh, and of course that if for them, that was on the, that was the coming of age for me and the going out for my parents as far as eight tracks go. But uh, uh, they didn't even, you know, for me, it was all components. I, wow. I never had any combination things. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was what my parents had uh, that I remember that was kind of like a combo of all of it. Mm. Did you ever have yeah. an eight track player in your car? I did. Ah, so you're one of those cool people. <laughs> yeah. I put it in my, my 1961 Dodge Seneca. So. <laughs> he, he was he was listening to myself. Ca- nothing, nothing says fun like listening to Cat Stevens and all of a sudden one of his songs. <laughs> Yeah, it's eat the tape. 
And those tapes were not inexpensive. That's the thing that made I, partly for us poor kids made a tracks not popular because they were too damn expensive. Uh, I'll just turn on the radio. I mean, they were pretty cheap when I was a kid. <laughs> well, sure. When you I, were a kid. It's funny. One of our since I go diving for records on a bi bi monthly thing, I one of the the local thrift stores had a giant basket full of. Uh, eight tracks and i'm thinking there's something that's going to be there for all eternity i legitimately don't know anybody who has an eight track player you know th there's somebody out there oh i guarantee there, it there, there is always somebody out there that that will jump on that thing you know it you know it well, I, I i i do i mean i'm i'm the bozo who's buying you know records from the 50s and 60s that you know somebody decided they didn't want to keep from a, their mother-in-law passed away so Next time you go to that same store, you got to see if it's still there because maybe you ought to buy that whole basket full and you can sell them one at a time on eBay for maybe a lot of money. Yeah. Or, or not a lot, but maybe you'd make double your money. Anyway. You know what I did? You know, I, so just put them up for $5 each. I need to call them something besides a track, call them like rare desk uh, plastic <laughs> leveling thing. Just see what kind of random shit I can name it. Well, you could always just, you know, grab a bunch of floppy disk and then just put a put them on the eBay for, you know, uh, rare save icons for, for, you know, like posters or some shit. So I like, just you you talk you talk. I just saw a TikTok video the other day that 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 reminds me of is this this younger person was saying how this isn't a floppy disk. It's not floppy, and it's one of the three and a quarter inch things. And and it, I'm just thinking, oh, this is this is I'm officially old. It's like. Mm. I, yeah. I just, I just, that, that shit makes me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, why John's yawning? <sighs> I'm giving him the signal. <laughs> let's see if there's any other. Oh, if you want to see an interesting podcast, um, Rick Flair was in the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> um, and seriously, Ric Flair is one of the most fascinating characters you, you ever hear about. He recently said, I don't care what he, uh, what Vince McMahon does. He's his hero. And Ric Flair and Vix McMahon have the same exact reputation. Um, that being said, it's a very interesting podcast to listen to for the, for all of us here at the Mad Trio podcast, as always. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye.